Hi guys, it is Friday the 15th, just gone 8 o'clock here in London. Hope everyone has had a good week. We'll have a look at the charts to see how we have got here on Friday, how the markets have acted over the last uh, five days, uh, and then have a look at the stories from overnight. I look forward to the calendar uh, and what lies ahead uh, for next week uh, as well. As you can see on my right-hand side, a uh, really interesting and it is actually a decent article, uh, to be fair, from Bloomberg. Uh, this is Trump's trade deal from start to end. Uh, and it's not a, not a bad reflection, it has to be said, uh, of, of the direction uh, that we've gone in and, and how we have potentially got to that phase one deal. Stocks are on all-time highs uh, as we head into the weekend. Uh, another good week, uh, f uh, 3,100 in the S&P. Got to you take your hat off to the, the bulls of this market, really driving price higher. Whether it's FOMO, whether it's no real negative headline yet that's driven price lower, uh, fair enough uh, for this big push. And it happened again overnight, breaking out this mini range that perhaps we've been in over the last five days uh, and pushing higher in Asian trade. Uh, we are just coming off a tiny bit uh, from that high, but you can see here, last well in the asian session the all-time high 3111 the triple nelson uh, a quick look over uh the currency pairs from the week so far just having a look over at the euro it's been drifting down certainly from the beginning uh, of the week on monday we then yesterday probably had the single most important release and reaction uh, so far for the euro because it's you know not mess about the ranges each day have been small uh, and then 7 a.m yesterday germany avoiding recession uh, a decent push higher in the euro only to be met by some euro weakness and some dollar strength uh, in the afternoon um, only then in the, the back end of the session to then push higher as well have we seen the low for the euro i think you'd be uh, uh, a wise uh, a wise person to to say no uh, obviously, we are the lowest we have been now, if I just, or as of yesterday, from the relatively beginning uh, of October, around the 7th. Uh, but we perhaps are, are due a little bit of a, a respite following the last couple of weeks that have been drifting down. That's really the main headline that has come out from the Euro side of things. There's a couple of comments from Trump overnight on trade between the, uh, the US and EU, which we'll come on to. But Germany avoiding the recession there, how is that, be? is that the bottom or is actually the good news here bad news? Um, and uh, for Germany now, uh, you know, this is just the start of uh, it, uh, a struggle to, to regain any kind of growth. For the pound, it's going to be a tricky, as we know, going forward. The deadline yesterday for candidates was reached at 4 p.m. Farage is not taking the, the 40 seat deal. Um, unfortunately, we got sucked into watching the big announcement at 11 o'clock yesterday. And I mean, it was it was painful to watch for, for 30, 40 minutes or so, just waiting to see, is he going to say something worthwhile? Uh, to be honest, I'm not quite sure what that announcement was, uh, unless it was just confirming what we already knew, that he's going to run those candidates in the 300 or so uh, points. But from the, um, from the week, Beginning Monday, decent push higher on Farage Maru removing 300 or, or so of the 600 uh, uh, places he was going to run. The pound push higher, drifted lower over the, uh, the next couple of days, and we are um, near enough near those highs. 129 traded last night on a bit of pound strength, a bit of dollar weakness as well, which we saw into the back end of the session in that euro as well. Ultimately, polls are now going to be the driver. Uh, Brexit comments, you've got to imagine, are probably going to take a bit of a back seat overall until uh, December the 12th is done. Uh, and are we going to have a majority, minority coalition, etc., uh, will be the, the main driver. So for the pound, it's probably, other than that Monday, been pretty tricky to trade unless you took the approach of, okay, the pound is, you know, I'm, I'm expecting still a conservative majority. Where's a good place for me to buy this market? Well, how about the lows where the buyers have taken over? And it's, in hindsight, been a good little trade to keep an eye on. If that is the view, then the pivot today looks good. You've got the high of yesterday uh, morning, the pivot uh, as a place to potentially get in to drive price higher uh, as well. So only the, the main headline you would say is Farage removing seats. They're not taking the deal. 
Uh, for now, the polling is going to be that main driver. For the Aussie dollar, like with many of the, the dollar pairs, has just been drifting lower over the week. We then had in the employment data overnight yesterday, that was bad. Uh, and of course, we drifted lower and we haven't really recovered uh, or we didn't really recover yesterday. The pivot today worth keeping an eye on, not really for any other reason than it is the pivot, but also the Asian session high. I'd still be keeping a watch on that 240 time frame of any of those previous lows uh, here looking at the, the 25th of October. If we can come back to test that today around 68.17, that could be uh, relatively important. We did on Wednesday morning have a push higher that in correlation with the uh, the Kiwi pushing 1% uh, on the interest rate decision. They kept rates on hold despite free cuts this year, uh, saying that not much had changed since their August meeting to warrant a cut. That pushed price higher, uh, dragged down yesterday by the Aussie dollar weakness, uh, only to push higher with a bit of dollar weakness as well into the back end of the session. And that's sitting relatively middle range for the Kiwi. Uh, going forward but the fact that they're not looking to have cut rates uh, for now I think has to be seen as an overall positive uh, in the market. The yen actually has, has been uh, a market which has drifted higher this week and if you were to say well stocks are at all-time highs um, you know you'd be a bit surprised to see the yen has had a, a decent week where you know you can see here we started Where's the 11th here? And we pretty much one, two, three, four days in a row. Of course, this is the fifth where we have made a new high. Um, so interesting to see the yen has been, been going higher. Yes, there's been a couple of mixed trade signals which have uh, brought stocks down a touch, but stocks are at all time highs. And the yen, you can see also following suit. So there's a sign there, a bit of dollar weakness perhaps, but the euro and pound also uh, have been and the Aussie dollar have been under pressure themselves so the yen uh, pushing on uh, but perhaps if the stocks go into the week on those all-time highs the level we've seen just traded now which technically looks really nice uh, you can see that breakdown area that we had from the beginning of the month you know it wouldn't be surprising to see that as a potential high for a while the trend line from those lows even though it's not perfect is something I'd be looking to have on uh, as well for an opportunity to get short uh, for uh, the, the close of the week. Moving over to, to oil, main comment uh, in a very range-bound last couple of weeks, it has to be said. Positive talk from Barkindo two days ago in the afternoon that pushed price to the top of the range, but yet again, it cannot close above the all-important 57, mid-57s, and we're now back down in the middle of the range. DOE is obviously not helping things yesterday, of course, as you can see a bearish release. Put in this longer time frame, why is that level important? Well, you can see going back to uh, September time, uh, we that's where we broke down, and we just cannot... Uh, close above when we do if we do I should say opportunity wise you'd have got to imagine there's a nice little push there towards 59.60 but for now it's a range bound market and we're in the right in the middle uh, here as well I guess going forward always worth with these to see if we can get any trend lines on and not matching up as of yet but if we, if we were to have a trend on these lows also with yesterday and the low of the day that's coming in around 56.60 uh, gold has been certainly an interesting market. I mean, if you were to look at just the, well, let's go back, where's the 11th? Just the, the five days of this week, you can see we're pretty much exactly where we opened on Sunday evening. Not much has changed. We pushed, obviously, lower from the, the big break, and I've got it marked up here around 1464, 66. Let me just make this uh, a bit of a thicker line because this is your line in the sand for the week. Do we close back above there? Bullish. Do we close below? Bearish. We've had a couple of days where the bears have been in control and it looked like this level is now going to be such a strong resistance and we go. Then at the back end of some sessions we have poor negative trade comments that we've reached the snag and gold has gone higher. Uh, we now just hit that key line in the sand which is the S1 and perhaps having a little bit of a, a push higher. But for me, it's all about where do we close this week? Uh, and you can see the importance of that level. Also looking longer term, I've seen quite a lot of talk on uh, Twitter about people wanting to get short 1480. You can see why. Such good support uh, for the whole uh, of 
uh, October, breaking down early November, uh, that will certainly attract some sellers, uh, technically anyway. S&P, as we mentioned, pushing, pushing on, keeping a watch on any of these previous levels of resistance. They can, of course, act to support uh, today uh, as long as the trend continues. Uh, and it seems as though it's going to take something pretty bearish to, to throw things off course. FOMO uh, taking over. I mean, what's going to happen if there actually is a deal? Where is this market going to go? Has Trump played a blinder? Or is this something we've seen before, which we'll come on to, uh, of course, with that uh, the article from the map design. The DAX range bound. The DAX is range bound. Look at that. Big ranges um, to, to take into consideration. If you want to maybe wait for more momentum, big headline to come through, looking for a break either way. Uh, predicting which way that will go for now, I have to say, is, is relatively difficult um, as well. Um, but yeah, it's coming off uh, in the first part of uh, the open, uh, and you would have to say the pivot, while there's a level, uh, is bang on in the middle of the range uh, as well. So whether you'd want to take a trade on there or not remains to be seen. T notes follow the yen, and to an extent, gold in pushing higher in the last couple of days only to come down in early trade. But we are just having a bit of a recovery this morning. No real headlines have come through uh, that I have seen. Uh, so maybe just a slight bit uh, of risk on to, to open up uh, the, the morning. Um, having a look at the calendar for today. So we've, you know, that's how we've got to where we are for, for now. Uh, just going to drag the, the calendar into the picture uh, and have a look what could drive price into the back end of the session. Well, the morning we've got final readings out of Europe for inflation numbers, so not expecting uh, a big move from that. Germany avoiding recession only saw a little spike either direction. Uh, 130 retail sales will be something to keep an eye on, but we know usually when that data comes out, there's suddenly a reason for it. Price comes back and we move on. Uh, as well. So not expecting really this data to have a long lasting impact on the markets. Industrial production, something else to, to keep an eye on and as, as well as the, uh, the New York Fed manufacturing numbers also at 1.30. A couple of speakers uh, but uh, nothing of real note. Powell has finished his two day testimony uh, summary. Not much uh, really there. So relatively quiet on the data front uh, that could move markets. Uh, so business as usual, unless there's some negative trade headlines that come through, and really that could be a great opportunity to see these markets come lower. Uh, the pound is going to be, I guess, on polling, but we've only just started, and whether you're going to have a long-lasting move off that, I'm not too sure. Uh, headlines overnight, though. What were the, the comments? Larry Kudlow, potentially the, the main talking point. Uh, of markets of, of why we had pushed higher in, in Asian trade. Um, they, they rose in the back end of, of the, uh, the Asian session and overnight as White House advisor Kudlow said an agreement is coming down to the short strokes. Concerns about the difficulty of completing a phase one pact had propelled treasuries earlier in the week, as we said with the yen as well, uh, and arrested the stock market rally that had took benchmarks, uh, took benchmarks to record highs. However, of course, we have continued to, to push on. Uh, Larry Kudlow going to say, we are coming down to those short strokes. We are in communication with them every single day right now. This actually followed from Trump earlier saying uh, that a deal was close, but not done yet. So it seems as though Trump is just, just, say, um, just on the other side of things, not wanting to, to give it away. And there was a tweet. Let me see if I can just bring this into picture from from Anthony, actually I retweeted it. And it seems as though it is about to start to come to fruition, in my opinion anyway. So Anthony here tweeting uh, back in the beginning of the month, China has requested to stop further tariffs, roll back September and lower those from last year. Recent US data has been firm, agreed. US stocks at all time highs, still deal to be signed in US political appearances and US would lose leverage. I just can't see the US conceding here. For me, the whole deal uh, blows up. Listen, the, um, we've been here before. We've absolutely been here before. Uh, if we look back to uh, sort of quarter two of this year, and the same thing has happened. 
Um, so I don't think that's a, a bad prediction. And it's one where if you're looking to trade it, you're waiting for that signal and the market has to come down quite a fair bit. We're at record highs. We've been pushing higher on FOMO. We can't have two days in a row uh, that are negative. This market of any real concrete bad news, I mean, it's coming down. Uh, it's going to come down pretty quickly. Um, <clears throat> Uh, the US, what they uh, are demanding uh, of this deal, of course, getting into the weekend when we were expecting that chili meat uh, at the summit to be this weekend, of course, that has been delayed. Uh, but the US demanding that China spell out how it plans to reach as much as $50 billion in agricultural imports annually has been one sticking point, uh, as have discussions over what action the US will take to roll back tariffs uh, in return for a phase one deal. So a bit of murmurs this week on that, but nothing really concrete that's coming through. Any bad headline has then been met with a good one and the algos are going off that. Uh, late last night there was a comment from the FT uh, or a source from the FT saying that the, the trade deal wasn't looking likely. Algo, little spike, then you get the, the pump from Kudlow and look, we go all, all time record highs. But you know, from uh, a, a perspective of a bull where you think this deal is going to get done and you know why on earth would you not be buying these dips if a market keeps making highs and highs and highs any dip is an opportunity to buy and if we take the the s p and go back to um when i was you know so so confident in that we are going to make all-time highs and this is you know going back to 2017 here any dip was a buying opportunity you had obviously trump getting in the election the previous year promising this all amazing tax deal and we were just pushing higher and higher and higher and people couldn't believe it but look how you know this is going back to where we're trading sort of mid and early 2000s we're now a thousand points higher than that uh, and people are just going off that uh, that this deal is going to get done any dip is a place for me to buy i also think maybe the fed are going to continue to be dovish well this market does continue to go higher um, until we get a concrete bad headline uh, just realized I didn't have the uh, the chart up there. So just going back to 2017 and, and just reiterating the fact that this market just ground higher and higher and higher and the opportunity to buy the dip was there and it is now. Just those dips are a lot smaller uh, for, for the moment. There's still, uh, both sides have sent uh, positive signals though. Let's not just say it's all uh, been negative this week. Uh, they are still at intent of an agreement. China has re resumed significant purchases of, uh, of farm exports since Trump mentioned and announced plans for the phase one deal uh, on October the 11th, uh, so uh, just over a month ago. For, uh, yesterday, Beijing also lifted a ban on American poultry, which has been uh, in, uh, as has been a ban since 2015 after the US Department of Agriculture made a similar decision to allow Chinese poultry into the US. Following that and moving over to the US and uh, Europe, Kudlow went on to say that no decision has been made on whether to impose or delay, uh, as many expect, new auto tariffs on imported cars and parts from the, the EU. Uh, the, pres the president received a letter from Lightsize's office and he is considering it. Kudlow said. So one to keep a watch on maybe over the weekend in the coming weeks between the EU uh, and US. I know many people have different views on, on what's going to happen, uh, but it looks like at the moment a delay is inevitable. Uh, so maybe if they are to impose, that could be uh, an opportunity to sell the DAX and actually look to get down uh, to the bottom of that range. Interesting article, as I mentioned in the briefing, this one here. And I know it takes the, the mickey a bit and, and maybe Trump has played a blinder and he still maybe got one uh, correction to deal with in stock markets before we're at all time highs next year. Uh, it's a really good one. I'm just going to post this in the, the chat now. We've tweeted it from Amplify's Twitter. I would have a bit of light reading perhaps in this morning. It's a, a fair whack of, a, uh, of an article and it just goes over the key points and uh, dates from uh, the trade war trade talks over the last few uh, years actually um, uh, an important point I want to make in summary of this is if you give me one sec in and it's this are we there yet are we finally there 
The events of the past uh, the past few weeks fit a pattern of false dawns in the trade war. So this immediately sort of drew my attention. It reminded me of, of what happened in May when we were very close to a deal that had taken months to, to put together. And then within days, Trump had threatened new tariffs and placed Chinese telecommunications gear maker Huawei on... Uh, uh, a blacklist restricting its ability to buy hardware, software and services from American high tech suppliers. So we have been here before when stocks have been at all time highs, when a deal has been close and look what happens when that uh, that comes to play. And here is that, that sort of that, that time, sorry, uh, around May and the stock market will come under pressure. You can see from that high to the low, you're talking, you know, nearly 8%. Uh, and I mean, looking at this here now, it's, I think, a collapse in trade and, yeah, I would say 29.50 comes quite quick. Um, if you're Trump, what would you do? Would you, would you want it now, this early, for the phase one deal? Or do you still want the Fed to be dovish at the beginning of next year and have a cut? Because in summary from yesterday of uh, Jerome Powell, it's kind of what we said the day before. Uh, he sees a few risks likely to derail record U.S. expansion. It's going to be you know, data dependent, but they're on a pause right now. So they're not looking to cut as they are suggesting. Uh, as um, Well, they're suggesting that they're not looking to cut. So Trump has to play this one carefully. Um, my opinion is this time next year, stocks are higher, are higher than where they are now. But there's a correction that's got to come. I'm with Anthony. I think this deal blows up. I think that then gets the uh, the Fed to be dovish. I think we get a cut uh, in the beginning or middle of next year. Phase one deal then gets done. I know it seems then potentially a bit last minute. Trump then gets an amazing trade deal or, or says it that way. The Fed have cut. Stocks are on all-time highs and he wins the election. That's how I think he will play it. But for now, while there's no real concrete bad headline, stocks have to you know continue to push higher uh, as well. Looking elsewhere here, uh, a good article again from uh, from Bloomberg, and I did see some some decent uh, uh, graphics that Anthony retweeted from BBC, just going over the general election and talking about some of the seats that have majority. So do check that out uh, from Anthony there. I'll just retweet that uh, now for on the Amplify account. But here from Bloomberg as well, it's just going into detail about which ones uh, are going to be targeted by each party. So here, if we're looking at the S&P, they're targeting, obviously, the Labour, Conservative, Lib Dem seats in, in Scotland, three of which were won by less than 1% of the vote in 2017. Labour targeting Conservatives, uh, Loughborough in the East Midlands, which is split down the middle, 50.1% to leave the EU. They're also targeting Conservative seats in London, that voted to remain in the 2016 referendum. My opinion is they actually could do quite well uh, in in some parts of, of London. Uh, the DUP sees Johnson's deal as threatening uh, threatening the un unity of the UK, meaning he can no longer rely on their votes in Parliament. Yeah, I think DUP will not be, of course, involved in that. And Conservatives are targeting Labour Labour seats in the middle and north of England that voted to leave the EU. Um, uh, Stoke on Trent North in the Midlands voted 72% uh, to, to leave, so targeting there. And Lib Dems want to pick up Conservative and Labour seats in London uh, as well. So here you've got some of those targets, and you can see just the the balance uh, there for the Remain and Leave percentages. So that some of them are pretty tight. So you've got some of the Labour targets there. Expect Corbyn to appear in at these places. Expect. Uh, Boris and his team to be appearing and doing speeches at these ones. So these are, um, you know, some of the targets that they will, will be heading into and, and trying to uh, get uh, some traction in. So when looking for polls to be the driver, these are the ones that I'm interested in. These are the ones that I want to, to see, um, you know, swing one way or another to then lead to potential you know, if these conservative targets all start to go the way of conservatives in the polls, well, now I'm looking for some pound strength and we can be talking about that majority coming in and, and pound goes higher. If it goes the other way and maybe Lib Dems or Labour start to get some traction, well, hang on, now we're either looking at a minority or perhaps a Labour um, majority, which, of course, at the moment is very unlikely, and the pound 
uh, from what we've been suggesting has got to come lower. So a decent uh, article there. Again, I'll put that in trading live. We retreated it from the, the Amplify uh, account uh, as well. Party politics, we've gone through this before, but no harm in, in uh, just reiterating that. The Conservatives obviously forcing that Brexit deal through. With a Conservative majority, this becomes more likely. Uh, Jeremy Corbyn rene renegotiate Brexit uh, deal with the EU within six months and then hold a referendum. He did, he did say a referendum yesterday wouldn't be uh, done within the first two years of, of him being in, in office, if it was the case. I, I just struggle, I think, to... Labour's a tricky one. They don't really know what they want to do. If they, I mean, I honestly think if they were clear here and said, look, you know, we're just going to be a complete Remain party, we want to get out, I think they could... I could generally think they could actually win uh, the election, but under Corbyn, it, it doesn't seem that that is likely at the moment. Um, Joe Swinson of the, the Liberal Democrats reverse Brexit process and stay in the EU. Lib Dems, I think, will do quite well. Uh, and the S&P halt or reverse Brexit process, it would be a massive, massive, massive shock if they were to get some real traction uh, as well. You've got some of the, the, the points there on the economy and health. Uh, I think, unfortunately, they will really get swept under the carpet here, as it is, in theory, for me anyway, a, a bit of a, uh, a second referendum is happening now with the general election. So, yeah, you can try and, and, and say all this for the economy and health, all these... Uh, these promises of what they will deliver but uh, ultimately I, I feel it will come down to do you want us to leave uh, if you do conservatives if you don't uh, Labour or Lib Dems but yeah a decent uh, article there here's the recent polls conservatives have a strong lead Labour just over the last uh, couple of weeks have taken over from a brief change of the guard with the Liberal Democrats there Brexit party have been pushing lower if you want a Conservative majority uh, for the opportunity to go long pound, you want that to continue for the Brexit party. If they do start to take some of these seats uh, that they're still running, uh, it just puts the spanner in the works and overall would be pound negative uh, as well. But a decent article there just to, to have a watch on uh, as well. Quick final look over that calendar just to build up that morning. You've got some final numbers out at 10am, not expecting much. A data slate at 1.30 to keep an eye on. Uh, and then to, to wrap things up, industrial production to 15 uh, as well. Stocks are just pushing lower this morning. The DAX uh, coming down to uh, its pivot as we've been tested right now. Safe Havens just having a bit of risk off to start the day. Uh, but let's remember, stocks are on all-time highs. Going into the weekend, I wouldn't fancy having any um, short, new short-term positions still held on uh, as a course. Uh, it wouldn't be the biggest surprise in the world if this deal, phase one deal, meets a, a stumbling block and we gap lower on the weekend. It would not be a surprise. But for now, FOMO taking over. The buy and the dip is still there. Uh, any questions as usual, please do uh, let us know. Hope you'll have a, a good trading day and even better weekend.